Yo, what's up guys? Back with another draft analysis here in the Swiss stage at Worlds 2023. In this game, it's quite spicy. It's quite interesting. We got this we got the LCK Civil War going on between T1 and KT. And honestly, some of the picks in this draft were a little wild, I'm not going to lie. So Super exciting to break down this draft for you guys. Let's get into it. Both teams are 1-0 coming into the scoreline here. And it's a very important match. It, it's really unfortunate the way the bracket's been working out because of, I don't know, a lot of regional battles, right? What's the point of Worlds flying everyone over if they're just going to play each other anyway? But it is what it is, right? So Bants are starting to form a little bit differently here. I think the Renata Stonks are going crazy right now. And things like the Caitlyn priority, the Callista priority is still very high. Uh, some of them I agree with. Some of them are a little bit interesting. I have to be proven wrong. But not in like a bad way. Not to disprove or uh, deny their understanding of draft. But this is... I've just yet to see the Callista work. The Vi ban is most likely in response to the Renata. And we are evolving into a meta that's very similar to that of the playing stage where a lot of teams were B1ing Zaya. Well, I don't agree with this, it's still okay to do so. I would I would say especially in this case because the Vi is gone, right? The Vi is already gone, so the, the viability of the Zaya kind of goes down. T1 could definitely go Kai'Sa plus Rakan combo here. They could open up like a different bot lane overall. But, but if they rather choose to deal with the Zaya Rakan, they could. But I don't think it's ideal. Things like the Orianna are still open. The whole jungle pool except for Maokai. Well, actually, no, I took that back. The jungle pool is kind of a little bit choked. But a lot of options here. Oriana is really solid, so they're actually coin flipping the idea that, okay, you guys can have the Zyre Khan, like we're just going to deal with it. If T1 wanted to both break up the bot lane combo and they wanted to pick Oriana, they definitely could have, because they could have just picked our Rakan Oriana 1-2, and it honestly would have been really strong, right? The only downside is that if they, if they pick Rakan here, and then Genji picks a stronger support, let's say Nautilus or Leona or um, Alistar or something like that, it's going to cause some issues, right? So that's something to keep in mind. Kai'Sa Champion Identity, she can both play forward into the Zaya, but most likely can be a bit of a mix, right? She can play with that W poke as well in this patch. The Rumble Stongs have been going up as well because... It's really decently viable. It's like one of those things, you know, where champions with a good AoE and reward good team fighting always just come back because that is the basically what League comes down to a lot of time is just being able to execute on these team fights. And Rumble has been slowly sneaking up with a few buffs and also just a pretty decent matchup curve, even into champions like Renekton. So. Very strong presence in both sides right now for Gen G. Although T1 has a pretty strong opener as well. The main thing to note here is that no team has picked jungle still. So the jungle pool is going to go down the drain, most likely. Unless unless both teams don't really care. Which is possible. Because there's a bit of mismatch, right? Gen G blinded top and T1 blinded mid, right? So T1 are just banning options for mid side to make sure this Oriana has as much room as possible. It's not really necessary for herself, but it's more so of a compositional thing, right? Azir combined with Zaya creates basically the impenetrable fortress in terms of front to back team fighting. And with champions like Kai'Sa on the board, it's gonna cause some problems. And things like Silas are just really solid here with the champions that um, T1 have picked and probably plan to pick. Because the Oriana matchup is actually okay for Ori, but there's other things that they they probably have in mind. So, Genji, just ban out nothing too crazy. Just potential picks for T1 to pick jungle on four, as well as the Jax ban, just to give a lot of potential for Doran to 
not have any bad matchups. Jarvan managed to slip through, which is actually okay into Zaya, and also is pretty good with the Orianna as well. So T1 have a very cohesive comp, right? Jarvan is the one jungler that can actually potentially answer Zaya because his ult still lets him do his job of locking Zaya down, and then they can still wait for the Zaya ult to finish and then kill that way. The Akali is something that's super interesting here, by the way. So Genji decided that they want blood, right? More and more, we've been seeing these pivots because of a lot of the champions that are just able to play both directions. And with so much pressure on bottom top side, Genji can afford to actually neutralize mid. And Akali is great into Oriana for this because she has a lot of rune options that she can take. She can if she she can go all three of the Doran shield, fleet foot work, and second wind combos just to make sure her lane goes well. And we're gonna skip over that because although this indicates that they want to go in a little bit more, what's crazy here is the Kha'Zix pick from Genji. Obviously, you might while you might think that it's completely dog shit, and you may be onto something. The let let's try to play devil's advocate here and think about what this Kha'Zix entails, right? It's a great matchup into Jarvan, admittedly. So the the win condition for Genji here, this this honestly looks like a solo queue comp, but the win condition for Genji here is that they're going to play through the Kha'Zix and make sure, handhold him with the strong lanes on both bot and top, give him room to actually dominate this J4, right? That is how they're trying to play this game. Another option is to just try to out team fight that you know a lot of teams have been doing. They can match control mages mid. There's still things like Talia and and to play for more Rome. There's Syndra match. They can even go, uh, they can even go things like Jace or Nico in here because you can kind of see they're going forward. So it's more of like a stylistic choice more than anything. They they probably have determined that in the low and slow. Genji, don't want the game to flow this way. So they want to cause a shit show. And this is what's basically happening, right? We love the shit show. Aatrox R5 comes out. It's really nothing special, in my opinion. To be honest, I probably would have liked to see something even tankier come out from T1. Because the entire weakness of this comp, it's just all base damage, right? If you pick heavy frontline, like, that can really dismantle um, these champions, it's going to be pretty much impossible for Genji to actually get through the front line and really out, out front to back. Well, not front to back, sorry. It's not even a front to back comp. It's the just out stat check T1, right? Aatrox is still fine because of the spacing is similar to Rumble, but it decidedly has less sustain and um, front line compared to something like Asante or Orn or something of that nature like a dedicated tank even i'm gonna be honest even like crazy picks like freaking mundo could work here like there's a lot of options uh in terms of full front line it sounds crazy on the surface but like when you really think about what jinji needs to do to win these champions can answer really well but overall t1 have a very generalist comp and they've been playing around that and there's still decent priority on all these champs and their main goal here is to be able to shut this comp down and really just out team fight essentially once they get to that mid game stage without too much chaos, right? In this sense, Genji have a really solid phase of around 15 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes, where they're just decidedly, they can cause a lot of chaos in the game and win that way. Whereas T1, they're, they're trying to play more traditional. And to be honest, it's weighing between the winning matchups, basically across the board, except for Akali, for Genji, against T1 being able to play the map better. That is, that is what this is going for, right? And because T1 only had an R5 to answer the potential Kha'Zix pick, which is good to pick on B5, right? This is a champion you should only pick late because it's like a very, it's a very comp defining champion, right? These comp defining champions, these all-ins should be late. And 
T1 can only ran answer. They probably already had a plan for the rumble pick. But then this kind of thwarts it, right, on B5. So that is the that is the premise behind delaying your picks as much as possible. Your important pivoting picks. So in in overall, I would say that this draft is probably pretty even because the winning matchups are offset by the better comp on T1, easier to execute, but it's going to make for a hell of a fun game. And I would probably if I were to choose a team to give it to, it's probably T1, but very slightly. Just contextualizing the fact that this team is so clean with this, with their with the way they play out comps like this, it's very hard. It would be pretty hard for Gen G to fully neutralize or fully take advantage of this still. But this this room for potential to just blow the game open is huge. So I'm I'd rate it like a 55-45. And I really like teams like this being able to draft differently and just provide unique, innovative picks. Hopefully this was insightful to you guys. And I'll catch you in the next draft analysis. Cheers.